Hello, and welcome to Family Maker Camp. My name is Sandy Roberts, and I am a Makerspace Coordinator for the Warren County Library and a STEM Educator for my business, Kaleidoscope Enrichment. I'm also the author of the Big Book of Maker Camp Projects, and I love this time of year. I love doing great, fun STEM and maker projects with kids all over my area, and um, though I can't do that this year due to COVID, um, I can come to you online and hopefully have a little bit of fun with all of you. Um, so thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, we have some really fun projects planned. Um, it is the perfect time of year to break out a nice new pair of sunglasses. You gotta have a good pair of shades. So I have a couple of projects, three in fact, that we're gonna go through from very simple and crafty to um, much more uh, techy uh, as we make some glasses that will glow. Um, all right, so let's talk about what we need. Obviously, the first thing you need, good pair of sunglasses. Um, so actually, not a good pair of sunglasses. Can we be real? This is not when you're gonna go out and get something, you know, decent at the mall. No, you're gonna go to your Dollar Tree or your, you know, your dollar store, whatever you have, and find, as the song goes, cheap sunglasses, right? Um, I like black ones because I feel like most of our glowing um, crafts look really cool in the dark if you've got the black that kind of hides the rest of the glasses but I do have some students that prefer you know your white sunglasses like this what you do want to pay attention to you want the bridge here to be uh, relatively large so that because when we um, do this for our electronics, our actual LED light up glasses. You need enough space there to be able to put in your LEDs. But in general, all of these projects, we're decorating our glasses. So you wanna pick something that's got a, a matte surface. Try not to get anything too, too shiny. Um, and it gives you plenty of space on the frame for your decoration. These cost me, like I said, about a dollar. So they're very economical. Buy a couple extra pairs because sometimes things go wrong. Um, but you can get them in all kinds of colors. Like I said, I tend to prefer the classic black. Um, so that's first things first. Of course, if you have sunglasses laying around, I've, you know, often uh, previous years, if they were given out sunglasses at like the farmer's fair or something, I might grab a couple pair. Um, <laughs> and I'm glad that folks are liking the, these shades. These are my favorites. These are actually, and this is actually the first project that we're gonna do. So these sunglasses glow because they use glow-in-the-dark paint. Um, I bought many, many years ago at the Hoboken Arts Festival a pair of sunglasses that were just gorgeously decorated all over with um, fluorescent uh, designs, like swirls and paisleys and stuff like that. And they were just gorgeous. And I wore them to death until they finally fell apart. So a couple years ago, I decided I wanted to try to recreate that for my campers. Now. I didn't know what kind of paint <laughs> that person had used. So I went to the art store and just started playing. And I discovered that they sell a glow in the dark, puffy fabric paint. Um, I'm not gonna say which brand because we all know that there's really just one big brand of fabric, fabric paints that you get at most art stores. But um, big uh, little tubes of glow in the dark, puffy paint that it might be for fabrics, but it, it adheres great to your um, plastic of your sunglasses. So I tried it out and sure enough, it worked so wonderfully. So let me just show you here um, under our document camera so you can get a look at what these kind of look like. I'm gonna zoom a little bit here. And I didn't break out the paints today because I wanna save enough time for our um, electronics project at the end. But these paints come with a nice little nozzle so you can just do little dots. I did a little flower. It's really easy for kids to use with, um, with that kind of dot. And then you can draw, of course, if you buy glow in the dark acrylics, this will work too. Um, but this is kind of your simplest, most crafty option for glow in the dark. Now glow in the dark paints work by um, actually s soaking up the energy, holding the energy from light all during the day or whenever you expose them then when they're not exposed to light, that energy is released as a glow, as a light. So this is a chemical um, energy response that stores light. So I like to do all, you know, all three of these projects because they're all three different 
ways that your lights, that your sunglasses are going to glow. So this one is your basic um, fluorescence. Okay, stores the the energy in your paint and then releases it later. But these are really fun to do. Obviously, you can decorate all down the side um, and really go crazy with them. So these are, I don't know, just kind of a personal favorite because I love them. Let me show you what they look like in the dark. So let's see. So I have a pic. I know I have a pic. Oh, wrong one. Where's my picture? I'm so sorry. Here we go. This is your paint. Sorry about that. There we go. So this is what your sunglasses would look like at night. And this is really fun if you're wearing them out at the pool all day. And then as night falls, your sunglasses light up and glow. So that's a really easy way to do some light up sunglasses. Next up, and you kind of got a preview there. This is probably our least expensive option. And it's great for young kids who may not have the dexterity to do something like this. And as you kind of saw, and they may not look as cool, but at night, they look amazing. As you can see here, they look really sharp. And of course, you can go crazy with these and add, um, you can go ahead and add more than just the one strip across the top. So how do we make these? Like I said, super simple. Coming over to the document camera again. Just going through some easy ideas for you first. And then we'll kind of talk about our electronics project in a moment. So, whoops, sorry about that. <laughs> um, so these are made, let me zoom out so you can see. These are made basically by taking um, the kinds of glow sticks that they sell for bracelets. You can usually get a hundred for a couple of bucks at a dollar store or any of those kind of stores. You're going to crack it, make it glow. And then I just have a couple of cable ties or wire ties like that. You're going to wrap it around. You're going to start from the center. You always want to center your glow stick first. Think about where you want this larger piece to be. I tend to put it towards the back. Some people prefer it up to the top. I really let the kids kind of play with that and decide because it's very easy. They're inexpensive. You can clip these off if they don't like the placement and do it again. It's a great opportunity for little ones to prototype and to come up with what they like. I do try to get colored packs of these, especially if I have colored sunglasses, so you kind of mix and match if you want. Sometimes that becomes an artistic element, is that the, um, the cable ties that they use add to the, the flare, um, but I'm just using simple black. And you're just gonna tighten it, tighten it, tighten it down, and then clip off your extras. You will need either a good pair of scissors, or you're gonna need, um, I just use wire cutters for that. So once you've got it tightened down in the center, and you really just need one, then you're gonna flex it out and you can see I've attached the second to the actual arm of the frames. Now this means that you can't, can't very easily fold these, but that's kind of the only spot where they'll stay um, without kind of, I mean, if you like that kind of bug look of having them you know, kind of flare out, knock yourself out, it's your, your glasses, you can do what you want. But I found that this adheres really well um, and you just tighten that down and then you're gonna tighten it down here. You can, of course, do the same thing with another one to the center and, and like that. Um, so you can get really creative because these are inexpensive and you can let the kids play. Um, you can also try hot glue, but I found that the wire tie was simply the easiest way or the cable tie was the simplest and easiest way to attach these. So this goes really fast. These are really fun if you want to um, do uh, photography, uh, light photography. So having the kids kind of like dancing around while they're wearing these and then taking um, photographs where you keep the lens open to capture the movement. So like the whole painting with light idea, these are a super fun, easy way to have a in the dark light, you know, dance party and take pictures with that um, long exposure photography and you will get some really wild pictures. So very easy to do. These are one that, um, I do a science and swim program at our local pool. And this is one of those inexpensive ideas that you can bring to the pool for like maybe a night movie showing or a night um, swim. And everybody gets to walk away with really cool sunglasses. And since there's no electricity involved, no paint, no drying time, they can wear them into the pool. It's a lot of fun. Um, so these are really great just for that kind of simplicity. So that's two simple kind of crafty ideas for our glasses. But 
what I wanted to save time for today was our um, LED glasses. And I apologize. I am, um, I'm going to be 100% honest. I fried my circuit just before we started. <laughs> um, so I had to take the, the battery out. I was playing around with something that I probably shouldn't have been messing with in my design. And I, uh, I burned out one of my LEDs. So it's not working at the moment. But the pair that we make together will work. We've got two ways that you can do this. The classic version from my book. Okay, and again, all the step-by-step -step instructions, written out instructions are in the book. The classic version used three millimeter, really tiny LEDs, and if you can see this, and I'll show you on the document camera, wire. So this is a 27 gauge, coming over to the cam again. This is a 27 gauge jewelry wire, the kind that you would use for like beading and that sort of thing. You can also find copper wire in 27, 28 gauge um, for things like um, making electromagnets, that kind of wire. Um, and it works really well. And basically, we're going to use your basic um, battery pack that you might find for like sewn circuits. These are pretty inexpensive. You're going to use wire to attach each end and then wind it. And I'm going to just zoom again. You can see that I've wound it around the legs of the LEDs. Okay, and we're creating what we call a series circuit. So, how do circuits work? This is the important thing that we need to discuss. Circuits. You need to have the energy come from your power source, in this case a battery, through whatever media is transmitting electricity, in this case jewelry wire, and to your load, in this case a small LED. And then it needs to leave that LED and go back to your power source. That way it creates a circle or a circuit. Um, in a series circuit, basically the energy, the electricity leapfrogs from one to the next to the next piece and then back around again. In a parallel circuit, you are going to have each piece actually connected back to the battery itself. Why does this matter? Okay. Your standard coin cell battery, which we'll be using today, only has three volts. Each of these little LEDs needs three volts of energy to light up. See the problem? So if you have all three of them in series as one big circle, you can think of it as the water's gonna flow, water might flow into the first item, fill it up, and maybe some water will get to the next one, but not enough, and it's certainly not gonna make it to the third. Meanwhile, if you have pipes going out to each of your buckets, maybe, you're filling each of those um, items with water. Same kind of thing with electricity. That's why, you know, so if you do this circuit in series, the electricity isn't going to flow all the way to the end of that circuit. And you're likely that your circuit is not going to work at all. Um, so it's important that you actually, and I'm going to show you these, that you complete your, your circuit, send the energy from your battery. Oops, sorry. I keep forgetting that I zoomed. So you want to make sure that you're, for each of these LEDs, each of our loads, the energy, the electricity is coming from the positive end of our battery to each of the positive L, uh, le, le, <laughs> to each of the positive legs, and then from the negative out to each of the negatives, so that we are creating a parallel circuit, not a series circuit. Otherwise, you're not going to get all of them light up. Now, if that feels like I can't do this, this is too much. Just go for one like blinking LED in the center instead of trying to do all three. It's fine. They're your glasses. You can do what you want. Um, so I just want to talk about that for a moment because this is a little bit more advanced circuit. Um, so especially if you're working with younger kids, you may want to do something like a paper circuit first, teach them the basics of how a circuit works, um, and then kind of move up to this project. This is maybe not the like a first time electronics project for some kids. Okay, let's talk about our parts. I'm going to grab them. So as I said, you can do this with wire. And that works really well. And I, then I just hot glue everything in so it stays in place. This version, though, I am using the Crazy Circuits Kit um, from Maker Shed. And this is uh, by Brown Dog Gadgets. And why, and the reason I'm using it, two reasons. 
one, this battery holder is really simple to use. Okay, it's got nice big holes to attach your um, your material to instead of these, these kind of tiny little holes for wires or thread. Um, it's very easy to slide your battery in and out. So this doesn't have a switch on it. We're just sliding the battery in and out depending on when we want them to be lit up. And this maker tape makes this project go so much faster. It is a kind of fabric. So if you've ever used copper tape for paper circuits, it's the same idea, but it is um, more of a fabric and it's really nicely conductive. And as you can see, it just molds right to the shape of the glasses really well. So it doesn't look so hot from the back, but from the front looks pretty good. Um, and it just makes the project so much quicker and easier. So especially if you're doing this for a camp, I really, I really like the maker tape option now that I have discovered it. Um, obviously you can do this. I did try this project with copper tape. I found copper tape wasn't very forgiving for this. Um, it tended to crinkle and, um, and break, honestly. So I wouldn't recommend copper tape for this project. Maker tape, my favorite option for this, jewelry wire, 27 gauge wire, uncoated, okay? If, uh, if you need to use wire, you can also, where to put it? Okay, this is your, oh, sorry, pickup wire, okay? Uh, you can certainly use this, but you're going to need to strip that outer coating, okay? So if that's what you've got on hand, you can certainly put that to use. All right, so we need, I'm going to just go ahead, I'm going to yank the battery pack right off of my previous set because I have used all my little battery packs from Crazy Circuits. Good kit, by the way, very good kit. So there we go, we've got our battery pack. We have got, oh, there it went. This is a three volt coin cell battery. For those that haven't used these before, the positive side is your smooth side. It's got a little plus sign on it. The negative side is rough, no markings on it. You have to pay very close attention when you're making a circuit to make sure that the energy is flowing from the positive to the positive lead of your LED. What does that mean, Sandy? Okay. You're gonna need some LEDs. The um, Crazy Circuits kit has LEDs in it. These are five millimeter LEDs. You can use really whatever size you want. Um, like I said, if you want to embed them more like this, that's a three millimeter, it's real tiny. I do love, before I shorted my circuit, um, <laughs> don't, I don't recommend you short your circuits, but I do love the brightness you get from the five millimeter or, um, LED in this. So especially for kids, they're gonna like that that glow. You can use the jumbos that also come in the Crazy Circuits um, set, but you're going to have to mount them on the outside of the glasses. They're not going to fit through the glasses like it does in my project. Um, but you know, you can adapt. So your LEDs, okay, you've got a long leg and you've got a short leg. Your long leg is your positive, your short leg is your negative. So this must always connect to the positive side of your battery and this must connect to the negative. Always test your LEDs very simply, slide the battery in between and your LED should light up nicely. I think the crazy circuit comes with red or at least mine did. Um, I have a whole bunch of LEDs though, Ta -da! lots of LEDs in a box so I can do lots of colors. A note about that, if you decide to substitute, now, if you have the, the Crazy Circuit kit, you're golden because you've got LEDs in it. If you can buy something like this, you know, we've got lots of LEDs. If you don't, I, I saw Mike, I think I saw Mike Carroll, I saw you on there. That's our Scrappy Circuits guy. You can hack tea lights and harvest out the battery. This also comes in Crazy Circuits, but you can harvest the battery and you can harvest the um, LEDs. So there are many ways you can get the supplies you need for this. You can order the crazy circuit kit. It's got everything you need. You can go ahead and hack some tea lights. You can order individual LEDs, millions of options. When it comes to color choices though, each LED takes a slightly different amount of energy, a slightly different amount of voltage. So if you have LEDs that have too different a voltage draw, you will end up with lighting the ones with the least voltage 
and the ones with that need more voltage will not get lit. So generally speaking, your cool colors, your greens and blues are similar and your reds and yellows are similar. So you will not have much success if you try to do, you, or you may not, depending on your LEDs, but you may not have much success if you try to do like red and green together. So I usually suggest to kids to do all one color, or if they are gonna try pairing, to pair blue and green and red and yellow. You can do whites all together, but you're gonna need to check for your LEDs exactly what their energy draw is and try and make sure that you're not going too, too different. Um, but the simplest way is just to use all the same color, okay? So today I'm gonna go with blue. Um, it's my favorite color, you may have noticed my hair. Okay, now, as I mentioned, maker tape. This is what it looks like on the roll. It's a flexible um, tape. And notice that it has a backing to it, okay? A white backing because it's adhesive. It's kind of like scotch tape, but it's got this backing that you need to remove as you work. And I'll show you that as we as we work with it. Um, I like to just keep a rubber band around it because it does kind of get everywhere. And a pair of scissors, always gonna need a pair of scissors. Foam squares. This is just gonna be used to hold your battery pack to your glasses. Okay, so you can see here on my pair that I kind of pulled apart. You can hot glue this on, but since I find these really useful for so many different projects, I didn't want to permanently attach it. Um, you could use a little bit of a folded over piece of duct tape or something like that too. But foam squares are cheap and plentiful. Okay, if you are using wire, you are gonna need needle nose pliers. And those are going to be necessary for um, wrapping the wire around the legs of the LED, okay, the leads. You're going to need that. Um, and I'm forgetting the most important thing. You're going to need a way to make the holes. So this is my uh, small uh, drill. It's a Dremel. Um, this is great if you're using these smaller LEDs. This is great if you've got kids with smaller hands. Um, the only problem I found is that I don't personally have a large enough drill bit to fit the five millimeter LEDs that I want to use today because I want that larger LED. So this is really easy to handle, especially if you have a Dremel drill press, which I do not have, but I really want. Um, but if you don't have that, here we go. This is the big guy. This is uh, you know, just your regular standard drill. This happens to be a plug-in model. They have lots of inexpensive um, battery operated ones. I've got, basically I went and I just kind of sized up a drill bit. Um, these are about an eighth of an inch. You need something a little bit larger I found just to make it easy to move these in and out. So that's what I'm using today. Then you need something to drill onto. I have my craft mat here that I treat mercilessly and a pair of cheap sunglasses. I'm gonna take off the tag right now. We're gonna get drilling. Now, with kids especially, I really, 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 really suggest that you have them take a marker or a little whiteout or even a little piece of tape and mark exactly where they wanna put their holes. Because if, if you go too far off or if you get too close to the top, you can really run into, um, run into issues. I'm just gonna take a look. These are about the same, yeah. Um, so you wanna make sure that you kind of mark these before you get started. Um, I've done these a couple times. I'm sorry, you're gonna see my, my torso. Very simple. And you notice I put it on a roll of masking tape and that's just to make it a little steadier. We're gonna drill from the inside um, of the, the glasses and we're just gonna start slow. Goggles should be on for this. Come on. What are we doing? There we go. Sorry, my plug fell out. There we go. This is a really good opportunity for kids to uh, learn to use a basic power tool. There we go. Come on. There we go. There you go. So you can see my first hole is there. Okay, and I managed to, it's tougher when you do these larger holes, you know, because you don't have as much clearance. 
but there you go you've got a nice hole you might want to use a little sandpaper or a file to just clean that so that's the easy one now we're going to do the ne next one okay this one's a little harder but again if you have um, clamps a vise something like that very helpful and again just teach the kids start slow There you go. And there you go. They feel very accomplished when they do this, by the way. <laughs> okay? This is like big time. Getting to use all this cool equipment. Okay? And again, I'm just going to come in and do my last one. Being very careful. Working on my mat. Oh, it's good. You know what works better? I had it in reverse. There we go. Now, if you... okay. So there we go. I've got my three holes in. See? Now, if you have a smaller drill bit, you can kind of just drill double holes to make the, the space that you need. So you have some options there. But this goes very quickly. If you do have a drill press, good on you. Um, that will make it much, go even faster. Um, and you're just going to test to make sure that your LEDs fit nicely. These do. These fit very nicely. Excellent. I'm just going to clean up real quick. Okay. Alrighty. So now I'm going to get my LEDs. And I'm going to get my battery pack. Now. As I was saying before, don't mess with your circuit when the battery's in there. So we are going to attach our battery pack, but we are not going to put the battery in at this time. You may want to consider having um, some alligator clips around to test your circuit as you go. Um, that will help if you're having any kind of connectivity issues that you can uh, troubleshoot that early. Um, so I'm just going to take my little foam square, let it go. Which side you put it on is really up to you. I guess I'm right-handed, so I do right. Um, just a little foam square on the back. And you can take a second to just check it out um, to orient yourself with this. So your battery is going to go in. Your positive is going to be here. Your negative is going to be there. Um, so I always have to kind of remind myself, where's my positive, where's my negative, right? Okay. So my positive is here. This is my negative. Positive, negative. put on my foam square and I'm going to orient it so that my positive is towards the front of my glasses. I'm just going to double check that again. Oh, I should call my glasses. Thank you. Okay. So past where it bends and I'm just going to go ahead and stick that on like that. Great. Getting on my, my reading glasses. I've hit 45 this year. I actually need them now. It's so sad. All right. So we get our LEDs. All of our LEDs, we're going to orient the same way with our positive long lead towards the top. So we're just going to go ahead and drop them in. And this is another reason why I'm working on this roll of tape, because in this case, as I discovered, with my three millimeter, they, they sit pretty flush. They sit really flush in the glasses. You don't have to worry about it. With this version, they do pop out a little bit. So it helps to just have a little bit of distance. So I'm gonna put all of these in so that my positive LED is up. Now you may want, um, you just kind of press them in. Again, if you need to widen that hole, you can. They stay in pretty well. You can, if yours are slipping out or if you're having trouble, just use a little scotch tape on the other side, a little um, invisible tape to just hold them in place. Uh, that can be really helpful. You do not want to hot glue anything into place at this point because it is very possible to accidentally break one of the leads from your LEDs at this point. And if that happens, obviously the circuit won't work. So um, my suggestion to you is to wait to hot glue anything in until you're done prototyping. Okay, so this is pretty simple. We are going to run from our positive battery along the top of our glasses for our positive leads. And then we're going to run tape down along the bottom 
far negative. Now, I did kind of, it is a little tricky to kind of go inside and over. This is where it gets really tricky. One thing I will let you know is that at three volts, you're not gonna really feel any kind of electricity. So don't worry too much if it gets close to where that nose is. It doesn't really seem to cause trouble. All right, let us get started. And I probably should have grabbed myself a little scotch tape actually trying to do this. I'm just gonna use some foam squares to hold my LEDs in while I work. Because trying to do this for the camera is a whole different thing than doing it just for myself, isn't it? That's what I'm learning this year with Maker Camp. New skills, folks, new skills. See, we can be thankful for all the craziness that is coronavirus every now and again, maybe. I'm trying to make the best out of it, right? Aren't we all? Okay, so I'm just gonna kind of use these to hold them in place because I'm worried that they're gonna slide out on me while I do this. Okay, got a good angle there, we'll zoom. This old camera of mine, this video camera that I'm using as my document cam, it is actually from when I graduated high school, believe it or not, uh, college, college, I'm not that old. Okay, I'm gonna make sure that I know where I'm connecting. All right, this is my positive. So I'm just gonna take my tape, I'm gonna remove just a little bit of the backing. This is where I wish I had decent fingernails. And if you guys have any questions as I'm going along, please feel free, I am watching for questions. All right, so you're gonna just kind of gently, gently, remove the backing, kind of bend it just a little bit because I want good contact. I kind of want it to go in to this little hole a little bit and make sure it's really making contact with, whoop, make sure it's making good contact with that, um, <clears throat> with the metal there. Let's see if we can get that to go in. There we go. And I'm just gonna kind of fold it over. And again, if you were doing this with the metal wire, it'd be the same idea. You'd just be attaching it to the positive of your um, your battery pack. Okay, so now we've got that. And we are going to kind of come up. You can see this stuff is so easy to use, and that's why I like, whoop, my LED did fall out on me. I knew that was going to happen. Didn't I say that was going to happen? That's okay. So, keeping in mind, positive to the top. I'm just going to very, very gently pull my negative down, my positive over, and you can see that. Come along with my maker's tape. And just go right along. Oop, I'm gonna have to take off my rubber band. Go right along the top, just removing the adhesive as I go. Okay, I don't want to take it all off at once though. And there it goes. <laughs> And then I'm gonna press down really well and just kind of seal, seal that leg of the LED in with that maker tape and then press it along the top. Because you really wanna get in there with your fingernails, make sure it's really well attached, okay? You can kind of um, fold it around if you want. If you wanna kind of um, wrap it around that LED, you may have kids that decide to prototype it that way. Awesome, let them go for it. Okay, here's our next one. Making sure it fits in, making sure we've got the positive lead on top. Again, I'm just gonna kind of fold that on over. Gently, gently, gently with these. Hold that in place with my fingers and come over with my maker tape. Okay, and again, just making sure I really press that along, make sure my lead is in really good contact. That's, that's where these tend to go wrong is if you don't get really good contact with your LEDs and the maker tape. And then we're gonna come along the top again. And you can see this is so easy. And this is the, uh, you know, I know maybe I'm sounding like I'm making a commercial. I swear I get nothing for this. But <laughs> I just really have found that this tape makes so many of my classic projects just that much easier to do. They certainly work with wire and other and copper tape and stuff, but maker tape is just, it's just an easier material to use. and when you can make it a little bit easier and reduce that frustration factor so kids can get to that success first, that's a win for me as a teacher. I, you know, it's a win for me as a person. Okay, so now I'm here at my third one. Sorry, can you guys see this? Yeah, so I'm gonna bend this lead. I'm gonna bend back towards center, okay? If you could see that. And again, take my maker tape and I'm just gonna come on in over it. I know I keep sneaking that a little song i've been listening to old 80s cartoons and now i'm apparently in an 80s cartoon and i keep making weird little 
music as if I am a superhero in an 80s cartoon. <laughs> Too much time on Netflix, I guess. What can I say? All right. There we go. So that's it. That's half hour circuit done. Now, like I said, at this point, you may want to go in there and test it with your um, alligator clips. And that's a really good step to, to show kids. But just looking at time, I know that we're going to start phasing out, moving on to the other things that we could be doing. So I'm going to keep on going. All right. Now we have to do our negative. And I'm just going to tear off this extra tape, get that out of the way. And you can see it only took, what it was at? Oh, about seven, eight inches of tape. Okay. So um, that's really nice too, because it definitely took more wire to do this because you had to wind it around. So you save a little bit on the supplies there. And I know some of us are on a pretty tight budget. All right. Coming back over here. This is my negative. I'm double checking again. Yes. My negative. Um, my negative port right here. So I'm going to do the same thing I did before. I'm just going to wrap this in and get a really, really good connection. Okay. Really good connection there. There we are. Okay. So I folded it over, made sure it's uh, wrapped in there really well. You can even use like a little pencil or um, something like that if you want to just kind of press it in. I have found that that's kind of one of my uh, points where I end up with problems if I don't get a good connection. Okay, now we're going to come around under. This is where it gets a little origami-like, right? We're going to come up here. Just trying to make sure I can show you guys. I'm trying to watch my camera too. And fold it over. This is the tough part. The top one is easy. <laughs> the negative is where it gets a little more uh, challenging. This might be a good place to pair up a younger student, a younger kid with an older kid. So the younger kid can feel very successful getting that top done. And then the older kid with a little more dexterity can come in and do the bottom with them. Um, and I know I'm talking like an educator, but that's what I am. So I'm going to keep on doing that. Um, this one I am going to go ahead and just wrap around a little bit because this is another one of those spots that kind of tends to like to fail a little bit for me. I'm going to give that good contact there. And you can see all I did was just wrap the tape literally around the leg. And you can see it's getting a little sticky. That's okay. We persevere through this. And I have let too much of my backing off. It's part of my problem. All right. And whoop, I've got myself really tangled. But there we go. Now we're back on track. And we just, again, stick it down, make sure there's good contact. Boom. We're going to come around the inside of our glasses, just kind of, for those of you that have ever sewn um, and done any kind of, um, like, made, made a sleeve or anything like that, you know what I'm doing here. That kind of pleating almost with this tape coming around. And up we go into the nose piece and just press that down because we don't want to, that to come off. All right, I'm going to take off some of my tape now. Try and get this out of the way. My roll has completely unraveled at this point. If I was working with students, I would give them like smaller pieces. I would know that they need about eight, eight inches for the first and I would give them the whole roll. Okay, just because again, it's a, it's a potential point of frustration. All right, coming up, you guys still see that? All right, we are going to go ahead and just push that leg in here. And you just want to make sure that your tape goes up into that nose nicely. And again, this is another challenging, challenging spot. You can, um, in fact, I think I'm going to go ahead and do it. I'm going to grab my needle nose pliers. I think with this one, I'm going to very gently I don't always need to do it. It depends on how long the legs are, how long these leads are on an individual um, LED. I'm just going to use my needle nose pliers to just very gently make that a bunny ear. That's what I call it. I don't know what other people call it. But I've just kind of folded it into a little bit easier to shape to use. Now, the other thing to let kids know when they're working here, you do not want the tape from the bottom to touch the tape from the top. That will short your circuit. Trust me, just did that. Um, because I was playing around. So over we go again, pressing down to get good contact and flipping our tape inside. 
Ooh, that was not well done, Sandy. I could do it neater. Or at least I could earlier. There we go. Over. And there we go. That's much, much nicer. Okay, see how I've covered that really well? And then you're going to take your maker tape. And I'm going down around the inside for the moment. It's just easier. Okay. Whew. That was the scary part. That was the hard part. We're through it. We're through the hard part now. All right. Just again, coming in there, really making sure I've got good contact. Okay. But there you go. Whew. That's a challenge right there. But, you know, this is, a, again, a really good point where they're going to have to figure out the best way to make it work and really play with it until they get it just right. Okay. Coming around, bringing our maker tape around. Home stretch. I'm just going to press this one down, right? And I'm just going to pre-cut a piece right here to get the extra off. As one thing I will say, maker tape does not, um, and this is kind of a blessing and a curse, right? But it does not break off as easily as copper tape. But in this particular project, that's actually a really good thing, even if it means that you got to get the scissors in there. Okay. So now you can see I've kind of covered that one, that um, negative lead, again, making sure there's good contact. Okay. So we're going to press it all down, make sure we've got good contact everywhere. Whew. Now, I will tell you, doing that with the wire is a little more challenging. Um, though one nice thing about the wire is that it has inherent structure to itself. So sometimes you can kind of shape it and just kind of lay it in there. All right, there are my glasses. I might actually go ahead and just throw. Now, just like most of your um, copper tapes for paper circuits, this is conductive adhesive. So if you kind of miss a spot, you can come in there and just add a little more, which is what I'm doing, just because I'm trying to get good contact there. All right, I double check. I make sure that I have no points where my negative is touching my positive because I'll short my circuit. Make sure everything's stuck down well, that all the leads are touching the maker tape really well, or in, if you're using wire, making sure that they're wrapped really well. Um, okay, that looks pretty good. Whew. Um, these, uh, okay, so uh, these are actually, these LEDs are in parallel. I'm seeing Sienna is asking, are these in uh, parallel or series? These are in parallel because we actually have the battery hitting each one separately. If this was in series, I would, oh, and I should have got myself a piece of paper. I'm gonna show you real really quickly. If these were in series, I would be going from battery to positive of my LED, to another LED with my ne my uh, negatives, and then back around to my battery. That would be a series circuit. In this one, we're doing something more like this, where the wire's coming across to each of the uh, positives and then across to each of the negatives. So this is a parallel circuit that we're doing today. Hope that explained that. All right. So we're at the moment of truth. This is always the very scary part. I hope it lights up. Normally, I would do a whole lot of testing on this first. Let's see. Oh, no, it's not lighting. I think my battery might be dead. I'm getting a fresh battery. I'm wondering if that's my problem. One second. Fresh battery. I tend to be a little cheap with reusing my batteries. I don't like to hurt the earth. Okay, come on, guys. All right. Nope, I am not lighting up. Oh, dear. Now I feel bad. Where is the problem in my circuit? And this is the reality of doing electronics projects. <laughs> um, figuring out where something is not connected well. And this is where, like I said, normally I would bring out my um, alligator clips. Pressing everything in. Now, we should be lighting up. We are not. One second. Try something. 
I can leave that in there. Um, here we go. This is when we have to, okay, so what I'm doing here to test where my circuit has gone wrong, just taking a little bit of maker tape here with, a, with another battery, maker tape on the other side. You could do this with a paper clip. You can do this with any kind of tape or metal or wire. But basically, I'm just creating a little tester. So, alrighty. Let's see if it's the, it could be that my uh, battery pack itself is no good. So I'm touching that. That should be lighting up. It's not. The other thing that can happen with this project, and I've had it happen a number of times, is without even knowing you've done it, you break the, the lead on an LED as you're going. And when that happens, that, that connect, yeah, yep, that very first one is not lighting for me, which means I probably broke the, um, I probably actually broke the leg, the lead from the LED when I was bending it. Um, and that happens. You know, it <laughs> that's that happens. Um, so I'm just gonna test here. I should light. No, I'm not getting any light on any of these. What did I do? I swear this works. I had it working just earlier. Hmm. Okay. Anybody out there know what it is? <laughs> what I do? What I do wrong? You guys were watching. What I do wrong because I was doing it for the camera. That's my guess. Is that I was paying more attention to cameras than I was to my project and I messed something up. Uh-oh. For me, the most common thing is did I did I wire it backwards? Okay, so that's an easy one to fix. Pop out your battery and see if just flipping it does the trick. Nope. Okay, that's not the well you guys are getting a a lesson in what do you do when a project goes wrong? Um, hmm. I honestly do not know where my problem is unless it really is. That shouldn't be. All right, so here's what we do. <laughs> Ooh, we're having fun now. And I just want to tell you, my studio right now is about 97 degrees. So uh, it's not real pleasant. And now I feel embarrassed, so I'm definitely getting... Nope, I broke that first one. See, it's not even lighting up with the battery right there. Oh, I did it backwards. Okay, so at least now I know what happened. <laughs> and if I was in a situation where I was really doing this, I would have to fix that first LED. Clearly what I did is accidentally um, broke, it doesn't look like it, like you can't see it, or it could just be that this LED is bad. It could just be a dud. But because that one isn't working, um, well, the other should be working though. Even if that one's not working, this is parallel. So why am I not? I tested my LEDs. Now I'm very confused guys. Cause that is not lighting up at all. Is it? Nope. See, I have no light. Okay. Well, I definitely killed that LED. <laughs> um, so my guess is these particular LEDs I was using in an old cheap pack was not the best choice of LEDs to use today. Either that or my batteries are really dead. They shouldn't be. They're pretty fresh, but all right. Just because we are coming up on an hour now, this happens when you are making electronics. So what I think happened is either my LEDs themselves are a problem because I broke the leads when I was working or my batteries are duds. My batteries just could be really old. Um, it is one or the other. <laughs> I am not sure which, um, and I apologize because like I said, I had this working earlier and I'm going to try one last time. I know you're probably not really all that interested in watching me try to debug this. Um, I do promise it does work. I have pictures of myself in, in, um, in this particular project, not on hand at the moment, but because I intended to show it to you. Anyway, let me just try. I don't have any other batteries. I have tried all the batteries for my kit. I have one more. I am at this point thinking my batteries are really old and are a problem. Okay, 
I apologize. We're gonna come on over here because I'm hitting that time uh, now. Whew. Okay, so what have we learned? Don't use old batteries. Um, and be very gentle with your LEDs. So I apologize. I have not had this happen to me before, but this is the, uh, the excitement that is live stream, right? Sometimes it doesn't work. I'm gonna wear them anyway though, because I will get them fu functioning a little bit later. Okay, well, thank you. I hope that you go ha out there and try these projects. If you have more success and you don't break your leads, definitely make sure that you post a picture to Family Maker Camp because I'd love to see it. Um, in the meantime, thank you for coming by. Thank you for trying the project with me. I hope that you go out there and make some fun things that glow for summer, and I will see you all again soon. My name is Sandy Roberts. I am a makerspace and STEM educator and the right, uh, author of the Big Book of Maker Camp projects. Um, I hope to get to have more fun with you this summer. In the meantime, stay safe, stay healthy, and uh, keep making great things. Bye.